As a healing Bjorning, my tip today is about the encouraging roar and the encouraging roar hot. As you can see from the skill description, you will need to have Mark of Grimbjorn present. So if you're healing, for example, a tank, the mark has to be on the target, on the tank, and you have to use encouraging roar on the tank to apply the dot. And of course, to refresh it. Just to show this, I can just put the mark on myself like this, and I use Encouraging Roar. You can see the Encouraging Roar hot on T1 is on me. And I just keep using it to gear it up. It goes all the way to tier 3 and gets stronger every time. So make sure every at least 15 seconds you target your tank and refresh the Encouraging Roar in tier 3. It will help you a lot with your healing. And my tip for Brawler is for the Brawler tank. Both your taunts have a bubble, a morale bubble that gets applied. Your AoE taunt has a slightly higher bubble with 350k right now for me. And your single target taunt has 230k. I think these are just based off of your morale. So the higher morale you have, the higher the bubbles will be. So my tip for this is basically always try to keep your bubbles active. If the bubble is gone from your bar, try to taunt again to keep your bubbles on yourself. If you're doing a fight where you don't need to save your taunts, you should pretty much always try to taunt if the bubble is gone. I'm gonna just show an example here. I'm tanking these mobs, I'll use my AoE taunt, get my bubble on myself. As soon as this bubble is gone, if you don't need to save your taunt for anything, as soon as the bubble is gone, taunt again. Just keep doing that if you have a taunt available and the bubble is gone. So right now I would use my AoE taunt again. My signatory taunt is back, but I have a bubble active. As soon as this bubble is gone, taunt again. Keep your bubbles active, it will help a lot. My tip for Burglar is going to be for Yellow Line and especially for the skill Trickster. Most people might be aware that Trickster is what you use to put a second trick on a target. If you have all the right AoE traceries, this is going to make a skill like Enrage it hit 7 targets. I can apply this to all of these dwarves. It appears I only get to fight 2 of them at a time. But in any case, if I use Trickster, you have a 12 second window to use the trick. Max target 7, so this would affect all the 4 dwarves. They would all have the trickster skill on them and the good thing about this is you can put two tricks as you would on a single boss you can keep two tricks on multiple targets if you keep uh, rotating your trick you could be doing this to all four dwarves right now use trickster will apply the trickster enrage to every target then one by one you put an enrage on each of the dwarves this also applies for like anything, trash pulls, you can just double trick 7 targets if you have the AoE target tracery. The captain tip is about your pet, your herald. You have your banner of war, this gives 2% mastery to everyone in range. The other one is your banner of hope, 3% physical and tactical mitigation to everyone in range. So my tip for any captain player right now. Please always use the Banner of Hope. 3% of both myths is so much better than 2% damage from the Banner of War. The only time where it's acceptable to use the Banner of War is if you're in a Fellowship run with another yellow captain who's tanking and you're the red cappy. If you're the only captain in your Fellowship or in your raid group, please use the Banner of Hope. My champion tip is just about knowing your AoE skills. At the top you see Raging Blade, Rend, Horn of Gondor and Bladestorm. They're all 360 AoE. You'll hit your target if you're facing away. All AoE skills have 5 meter radius except for Raging Blade which has 8 meter. So Raging Blade is like your really longer range full AoE. As you can see if I use Rend It'll hit this dummy, even though it's behind me. Same goes for Raging Blade. It's going to hit the dummy, even though it's behind me. Horn of Gondor, same thing. Same goes for Blade Storm. 
but you'll notice that blade wall is a frontal AoE attack, so it's not going to hit the target, as well as Fury of Blades is not going to hit the target. But if I turn around, Blade Wall will of course hit, as well as Fury of Blades will hit the target. Make sure you're facing your targets while using Blade Wall and Fury of Blades, and make sure you're not too far away. These skills only have a 5.2 meter range. If I stand back here, obviously I'm not going to hit my target. A good indicator to see if you hit your target, you can see the red little dots on the skills at the bottom. They will kind of light up when you're within range. So this is out of range and this is in range. Your blade hits the target. I go out of range, blade wall misses the target. As a blue guardian, you want to build your fortifications. And this tip is about how you can do that faster than usual. Everybody knows you build them with your shield skills, but you can use your ignore the pain and your stamp to cancel the animation of the long shield skills. So if you do it normally, you would build it like this. You would have to wait for all the animations to finish. And it takes a while. But I would recommend trying to practice using Ignore the Pain and Stamp to cancel your animations. So it would go something like this. A lot faster. Everyone knows that as a hunter before combat, you always want to go into camouflage. You want to use burn hot and then improve focus before you start your rotation. But if you're already in combat, you're not allowed to use focus, you're not allowed to use camo. Using burn hot, there's a really nice trick that can save you some time for your DPS. All you have to do is use burn hot and just take a small step to the side like this. And you can cut the animation and keep DPSing, saving you some time, giving you more DPS. My biggest tip as a lore master is please use your pet debuffs. I see far too many lore masters in six mans in a raid not utilizing their pet debuffs when the pet debuffs are really really strong and can really benefit your DPS. I'm just quickly going to go through all the main ones that you need to worry about. You have your Raven, which is summoned by the skill Raven Lore. And the main skill for Raven is Benediction of the Raven, which applies a fire mitigation. It's only 10% normally, but you should always use Cat Mint, which will double this effect. So Cat Mint and then Benediction will give a 20% fire mitigation debuff on the target. Really good for Rune Keepers and Hunters. Any class that deals fire damage. The other good thing about the Raven is that you have a skill called Distraction. This can be useful, for example, on a target that is ranged, such as an Archer. If you use this toggle skill, this Archer will most likely start running to its target that it's focused on instead of standing there shooting arrows. This can also be used to reduce damage taken by any ranged attacks, such as HOR last boss when he does his wing flap. In a lot of situations, this can be really useful. You have your Bog Lurker pet called Friend of Nature. On the Bog Lurker, you mainly have the Root Strike, which applies a plus 5% incoming range critical chance. Really good for hunters. Really strong debuff, lasts 30 seconds. The other thing is you have something called Bursting Root that has a 20% chance to apply a Fellowship Maneuver. Friend of Bears will give you your Bear Pet. And with your Bear, the main skill is Shatter Arms, 10% incoming melee and range damage. Really another really strong debuff. It should always be on your target. And the, another good thing for your Bear is your Roaring Challenge, the Bear Taunt can be useful in a lot of situations. Those three pet skills are your main ones that can be applied at any time. You should always keep those up if you have the classes that need those debuffs. There's also Commune with Nature, summons your spirit pet, and this pet is really useful for the Nature's Light. 20 second duration returns 5% of any damage, really good heal for your DPS players in your group. But this skill has a 3 minute cooldown, so for this skill I would 
choose wisely when to use it. Whenever you know your group is going to take a lot of damage, like random damage, this is a really good pet skill to use. And finally, I just wanted to mention the Friend of Feline Hunters. Your Sabertooth Cat Pet can debuff Frost Mitigation by 10%. I believe this was useful during the, the trigger essence that gave burst frost damage. So this is one to keep in the back of your mind. If frost damage is ever good, you can apply this as well. And for the minstrel, my tip is for blue line and the hammer hand bubbles. Most people might know if you play a minstrel, using the bubbles it takes a, long, a little time to apply the bubble. But a way to speed up the application of especially the fellowship bubble sometimes you want to get this up really quickly a good practice is to use a skill such as piercing cry to animation cancel so we can look at the difference this is without cutting the animation fellowship wide bubble takes a little while to apply and this is what happens when you animation cancel it it applies a lot faster, and trust me, this can save lives. For Runekeeper, this tip is going to be for your Self Bubble Word of Exaltation, combined use with Steady Hands. Steady Hands is a scale that will change whatever attunement you have. So for example, if I go and max out my attunement for damage, as soon as I use Steady Hands, it will flip all this attunement over to healing so max out my healing with maxing out the healing attunement it's going to increase the strength of this bubble so if you're in a situation where you're going to take damage that you can't avoid a good practice might be to use steady hands into word of exaltation so you would do steady hands and then your bubble on yourself 300k bubble to help you mitigate some damage as a Yellow Warden, if your Fellowship has a lot of induction-based classes, such as especially Hunters, they will really appreciate you if you trade the Hurry Up with that 3 points into Yellow. This will make your ranged Adroit Maneuver trigger an induction buff for your Fellowship. You'll notice that Adroit Maneuver in Melee Stance does nothing, but if I switch to Ranged and I build it again, you can see that it has a 20% all skill inductions and the effects apply to the fellowship within 25 meters so quite a big range so your hunters will love you if you do this for them just add ranged adroit maneuver to your rotation and your hunters or rune keepers will love you for getting this buff if you like lord of the rings online there's one place you need to be in every video that I post, you can go down to the description and join my Discord server. This will take you to the Guniverse, a Discord server specifically made for Lord of the Rings Online. Here you will have monthly giveaways where people can enter and win Lotro Point codes. You'll also see whenever I post a new video, as well as stream. There are discussion channels for every class, or PvP, whatever you want from Lotro. And there's also a best in slot section, where you can find screenshots of everything you need in the game. Every new gear that comes out, everything you need. Pretty much all the best items you can find here. And all the way at the bottom is my video archive, you can find all my old videos. But if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings Online, if you're a new player, if you're an experienced player, this is a good place to discuss and learn about the game.